Welcome back to Suvida Everything, guys. You know, one of my latest videos, the number one comment was, Google, which one is better for a steak, to marinate or to season it? Since it was the most popular comment and a lot of likes, by the way, I read every single one of them. Make sure you comment down below if you wanna see an experiment happen. With that being said, you guys asked for it and there's no way I'm gonna let you down. Check it out. Rubs and marinades are a great way to add flavor to your steaks. But when should you add marinade? And when should you rely on a rub? Today, we're gonna to be putting an end to that question. First, what is a marinade? Marinades are liquids which are made of herbs, spices, and a type of acidic liquid, such as citrus, vinegar, or alcohol. They not only add flavor to your meat, but also tenderizes it. The acid breaks down connective tissue and makes the meat more tender. However, if you are cooking with a protein that is already tender, such as fish, chicken breast, or tenderloin, you should only marinate them briefly, usually for two hours hours or less. Tougher cuts of meat like eye round should be marinated on the fridge anywhere from 4 hours to overnight. Now keep in mind if you have a marinade that has a lot of acid such as pineapple, you never want to marinate it for longer than an hour. If you do, it will turn into mush. I've done that video and trust me, it was a complete nightmare. You can always watch that later on and I'll be putting it on the description down below for you. Don't do it. This is what my nephew Angel said about it. It's like the, the steak took a in my <laughs> mouth. Don't curse, bro. Don't say that. <laughs> Yep, I told you, don't do it. It's not gonna be good. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is that meat left at room temperature can cause food poisoning. So never leave meat marinating at room temperature for longer than 40 minutes, especially if you're cooking sous vide. On today's experiment, I'm gonna be using the same marinade in two types of steaks. One is gonna be a ribeye, which is very tender, and the other one is gonna be a skirt steak, which is tougher. And by the end of this video, we're gonna find out if this is also true for sous vide. Now let's talk about seasoning. We also call them rubs. They're usually a dry mix of spices, sugar, and salt, which adds flavor but do not tenderize the meat. That's why I always use it on a New York strip or a ribeye, which are already tender. And let me tell you, they also pack a big punch of flavor when combining it with sous vide. I've done an experiment where we use fresh garlic versus dry garlic, and the winner was hands down the dry garlic. And that's why I use it in 95% of all my steaks. However, I have never done a side-by-side -side comparison like this, and I can't Way to find out which one is best. And for today's cook, these are the star of the show. I got two beautiful bone-in ribeyes, which are both prime grade. That means that they are already tender, have a great amount of marbling, and it's basically an amazing steak. The other one is a skirt steak. If we are comparing tenderness, this one is not as tender as the ribeye. It also has stringy fibers, which we usually use marinades for it. Here in Miami, we also call it churrasco, and every restaurant you go to, they always use a marinade. Even though it's a tougher cut of meat, sous vide can cook it to perfection. I first started with the seasoning. I kept it simple like I always do with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. One of the biggest mistakes most people do is that they do not season it well. Don't be afraid of the seasoning. Make sure every edge is covered. To make sure my skirt steaks are gonna fit nicely into the bag, I cut it in half. Once I was done, all there's left to do is to bag it up. But now that I have both of them seasoned, it's time for the marinade. Remember, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. To start my marinade, I'm using my pesto and mortar. I threw in black pepper and ground them up. Then I added fresh garlic and white onions. Following the same procedure, I ground them up fine. If you don't have a pesto and mortar, you should get one. These things are awesome. Then I added the master of all seasoning, which is salt, followed by red white vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, and a little bit of oil. Now there's left to do is to mix it well and my marinade is done. I must warn you, this smell and tastes so good that you might want to have it raw. The next thing to do is to add it to my steaks, and you want to make sure you add plenty of it. I recommend doing this directly in the bag, but since I'm doing a video and I want to show you what it looks like, I am doing it this way. Throwing directly in the bag is a lot easier and the best way to do it. Now all there's left to do is to bag it up, seal it, and get ready for sous vide. I'm going to be cooking both the marinade and the seasoned steaks at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for 3 hours, and I can't wait to find out which one is best. I got my beautiful steaks ready. I cooked the ribeye at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours. The other one, which was the churrasco, also known as skirt steak, I only cooked it for two hours at 135 degrees Fahrenheit as well. With that being said, they are both ready. I can't wait to find out which one is best. Let's take them out, let's do it. If you ask me, Google, which one smells better? 
this one here everybody this one here smells a lot better than this one here but don't get me wrong though this one here smells fantastic as well and if you were here with me i don't know if you will be the same because they both smell amazing with that being said i am going to pet it dry so that we can get a wonderful sear now the churrasco aka skirt steak what happens is when you're putting a sear on it it gets really really dry right so i am going to be giving it a butter basting on it so that we have even a better sear and also an additional flavor i'll be doing that with both of them the ribeye doesn't really need any uh butter on it with that being said man I can't wait to find out which one is actually better. And I know they don't look that good right now, but watch this. All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful steaks. What do you think, Juan Malzain? They look beautiful, they smell incredible. They I smell so good, right? Now, I gotta say something, though, because the consistency of sous vide is unparalleled. Oh, Nobody can match it, because even the actual, you know, this is, we call it, I said it already many times, the skirt steak churrasco is perfection. All the way through the same color. The only bed that it got over there is from Siri on the From grill. the crust, which there's no avoidance no of that. Now try to do this on the regular uh, grill, everybody. It's very, very difficult unless you have it very, very hot. With that being said, let's try this. Yeah, Mama? Right. Cheers, everybody. First one, Mama Zing. Wow. That is soft. That is super tender. I enjoy skirt steak so much. Mm. It's not a regular skirt steak. Why not? It's missing some flavor into it. Really? I don't know how to describe it. Usually you have a... Usually the, when you're tasting it, there's more of a full flavor into it. Really? It's not like it's missing salt. I can taste the salt. Yeah, you can definitely taste the salt. And, and I can taste the steak. Mm -hmm. Not bad by any means. Mm -hmm. But compared to my previous experiences, it's missing something. It is super tender though. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's super tender, everybody. I really enjoyed that, but I see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with this one here. Let's see if there's any difference. Second one, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, there, uh, there you go. There's a huge difference. There you go. Which one do you enjoy more, Mama? This one. That one, huh? There's like different complex flavors. What happened? I see your face. You didn't put marinade on this, on the first one. Ah! <laughs> I can taste this one has a little bit of a hint of the vinegar. Yes. And it stays on your mouth a little bit longer. Yes. And that's yeah. what I was missing. Ah, you see, so this one, Mama, wow, 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 you are a freaking expert, Mama. I mean. So this is the difference. This one here is marinated. Okay. This one here is just seasoning. For me, at least, I enjoy this steak here with this the, one is with the marinade. Yes. With the marinade, it's a lot better, it everybody. Has, it has more of a full body flavor into it. Yep, I agree 100%. Now let's try that with a ribeye, huh? Eh? Right, let's let's see which one. Cheers. Mm. Mm. This one deserves a second of silence. Mm -hmm. That is so nice, everybody. So juicy. Like my mouth is watering as I'm mm. taking a bite, mama. Hold on. <laughs> I have to meditate on this one a little bit, okay? <laughs> this is how you meditate to steak, okay? Mm. <laughs> it is a steak that you enjoy the moment, everybody. Wow. wow. I enjoy that. I mean, I don't know what to say about that one. It's just <laughs> a perfect steak. It is. Let's go ahead and try the second one and see what happens here. All right. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. What happened, Mama? <laughs> You don't seem to enjoy this one very much. Did you marinate the steak too? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it just doesn't belong there. No, it doesn't go together. It doesn't belong there. It's like it doesn't belong there. What are you doing, Google? Why did you put some marinade on the steak, man? That just doesn't belong. It's missing flavor. It's missing flavor. It's like washed out. It's washed out. Yeah. yeah it's like definitely. Anytime you cook sous vide with any kind of fat, it leaks flavor. Yeah, That's, I agree. I think it's because of the, the texture of the uh, the meat, you know, the actual fibers. 
the, how they're able to take in the flavor of the marinade. Mau Mau, you hit it on the money. I agree with you 100%. It is all about the texture of the meat, the fibers, how it was designated. That's why we recommend, you know, using the marinade for some, but we don't recommend using for others. And if you are having a nice high-end steak, you're not gonna marinate that steak. Because if you marinate, you're gonna lose oh flavor. And so what happened, you mama? You just gave me a nightmare right now. Why? You just made me think of somebody marinated a Wagyu. No, don't do that. Wow. <laughs> No, imagine you put a marinade on a Wagyu steak. Come on, that is like a crime. You don't do that. You deserve but, to go to jail. Yeah, you do, you do, you do. I would say if this has longer fibers or if it's a tougher cut, then it deserves some marinade. If it's a premium cut, like a New York strip, a ribeye, a beef tenderloin, a filet mignon, something like that, you don't put a marinade. But, you know, like, skirt steak or chuck roast might be even good or any other thing that is tougher that it deserves a little bit more you put some marinade are you all right mama so good. <laughs> the marinade on the skirt steak we love it a lot better but we don't recommend the marinade on the ribeye agree don't marinate your steak <laughs> unless it's a unless it's a, unless it's the right steak the right steak it's all about the steak oh. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. We out. And remember, once again, well done is a crime. Well done is a crime. <laughs> I second that 100%. We out, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.